The last piece of the modulation panel that we're going to take a look at are the two low frequency oscillators, also known as LFOs. Low frequency oscillators have been around for a long time, but they became super popular around the rise of dubstep, which is characteristically defined by a wobble bass. Of all the complex ideas and relationships we've discussed this far in the course, I think the low frequency oscillator is one of the easier terms to understand in a sense. An LFO is exactly what the name suggests that it is. It's an oscillator, which emits an electronic signal just like the oscillators on the synth panel, but its signal is at a very, very low frequency. So low, in fact, that it's outside the scope of human hearing. You might ask yourself, why would someone create an oscillator which emits a sound we can't hear? And well, the answer goes back to the idea of vibrations. Oscillators create waveforms which travel back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, like a pendulum, and we can use that movement to create a lot of musical effects. As we saw in the other oscillators in the synth panel, there are many types of oscillation. There's a smooth sine wave, there's a square wave, there's a triangle wave, as well as a sawtooth wave, and many other complex waves. The LFO has the pendulum swinging here, but outputting a signal we can't hear, so it's not adding any new colors to the sound. We use the oscillation as a control signal. We set the oscillation of the LFO's waveform to control other parameters on the synth, assigning those parameters that back and forth movement that we've been talking about. Tremolo and vibrato are two of the most common LFO uses we encounter. If the LFO is set to control the volume on one or all of the other components in the synth, the volume will follow that pendulum swing of the LFO up and down. When this happens, it sounds like a tremolo, a sound very characteristic of early electronic keyboards like the Wurlitzer. If it's mapped to a tuning parameter, it will sound like a warble or a vibrato. Besides volume and pitch, it's also very common for an LFO to be mapped to the cutoff frequency of a low pass filter. That creates a distinctive opening and closing effect, which is how we get those wobble bass lines. Let's check this out further by navigating to preset number 70 named Imperial Pad. Just looking at the settings for the sound, you can probably guess what's mapped to the LFOs because the knobs associated with those parameters are currently in motion and at a very fast rate. If we click on LFO 1, you'll see that it's mapped to the fine knob on oscillator 1 and 3 which will bend the pitches in a very fine granular amount, a measurement known as cents. LFO 2 is mapped to the width of oscillator 3, which creates a sort of chorus or detuned effect as well. Let's press and hold a key wave in the upper register so it's easy for us to hear what's going on. You can clearly hear the vibrato that the LFO is creating. The word frequency obviously relates to pitch, but frequency also means how often something occurs. On an LFO, frequency has more to do with speed than it does with pitch. If you turn down the frequency on both of the LFOs, you'll notice that the rate at which the dials are swinging slows down. Since very low frequencies vibrate at very slow rates, when we adjust this level down to 2 Hz, it will be swinging back and forth slower than if we were at a higher frequency, like so. The movement of this LFO is currently instructed to affect pitch via the mapping. If we adjust the level, you'll see that the oscillation becomes more or less pronounced. If we pull this all the way up to 100%, it's going to reach the highest and lowest values of the mapping, and if we lower it, the less far the dial travels. The fade knob is a time-based parameter which will dictate how long it takes for this LFO to fade in and out, and just like the envelopes, we have a value of 0 to 5 seconds to choose from. So if I turn this all the way up, you'll see that it's going to take a moment for that to really kick in. Now let's do something a little bit more advanced. I'm going to map envelope 5 to the frequency and level of LFO 1 and 2. And what I want is for this vibrato the LFOs are creating to come in slowly, reach its maximum value, and then fade out on the release. And since this is a time-based modulation, I'm going to use an envelope to make it happen. So let's work through this together and see if we can understand how everything is working in tandem. Click along with me as I do this, and remember you can always reset the preset by navigating away and right back to it. And you can also start and stop this video as many times as you need to. We'll start by turning on envelope 5. Now turn up the attack and release time so you get a slope that has a gradual fade in and fade out and looks something like this. 
Now we need to turn down the base value of both the frequency and the level on both LFOs so that we have some headroom to travel once we hit a key wave. Then with envelope 5 selected, map it to increase those same parameters that we just lowered. So now when we press a key wave, let's see what happens. Keep an eye on the fine and width knobs on oscillator one and three. Not only do they speed up in frequency, but they also swing back and forth more dramatically as we reach the full value on the envelope. And then as we release the key wave, the converse action takes place. For those of you who are just starting to learn about envelopes and LFOs, that may have been a lot to digest. If you're in that boat, I would go back and watch the previous video and this video a few more times for starters. Then I want you to go through all the different presets, see what different mappings already exist on the envelopes and LFOs and watch them in action. When you find one that intrigues you, try visualizing an adjustment you could make. Work it out in your head first is how you might go about creating what you wanna hear. Then see what happens when you execute that plan. The more you experiment and use your ears, the more you'll understand and be in control of these devices. Not only that, but it will actually make you smarter since you'll be using the creative right side of your brain to imagine a sound and the analytical left side of your brain to deal with technical stuff. And by doing that, you create new neurological pathways between the two.